Okay. So, <clears throat> first one, our first one was we need to uh, this suppose there will be some make it okay there will be some make it just like this there will be some make it and you will see there are two rubber bands just like this okay there are two rubber bands just like this and you need to tie or you need to approximate these two rubber together okay with by using a non-absorbable um, multi-filament suture that means braided suture that is the most uh, suitable one so you need to perform a hand tie okay so what are the things we need to keep in our mind first of all what is the suture we are going to use what is the instrument we are going to use how many throws we are going to give that's the important things for each of the steps okay for approximation for this one we are going to use our silk okay silk preferably zero and here you need to use only your hand okay you cannot use any instrument for this procedure next one is how many throws or how many uh, like you know uh, how many knots you are going to put here so it is wise to at least give three throws or knots for this particular procedure so what we are going to do simply we will do a knot here by using our hand and we will try to approximate these two vessels together by this now i will show you a video how you can do that okay Okay. See this video very carefully. I like to have the thread. Um, can you see the video and you can hear as well? Yeah. Okay. Draping across my palm. In this first move, I call the karate chop. You're going to pinch the string between your thumb and your pointer finger, open your hand, and karate chop the string, draping it over your three fingers. You're going to take the post and drape it over in the opposite direction. With your middle finger, you're gonna go over the purple, under the white, and extend. You can see that you form a cross. With your middle finger and your ring finger, you're gonna pinch the white string and pull it through the loop you created. And you can see that we've tied an overhand knot. Pull it tight, first knot's done. The second one starts the same way. And essentially, securing the- Okay, I want to say something here. <clears throat> if you see the move, clearly then you saw the right hand was moving that means if you think this purple color thread this is the thread where the needle is attached okay so the basic rule is you cannot move the part where the needle is attached okay so you need to move the other parts where there will be no needle okay keep that thing in your mind that's very important point okay and this is one throw so you have to put at least three of this everyone you are clear not clear you can ask please again ask me you are not clear about the needle part i guess dr fatima are you clear yes sir yes sir okay fantastic the string with your lower three fingers you're going to extend your pointer finger and with your thumb part Sorry, Dr. Sonia. Dr. Sonia, I, I, I didn't hear you. Sir, I think my said internet issue some. Sir. Uh, uh, 
I, I, I cannot hear you, Dr. Sumi. I'm sorry. I think, sir, she wanted to go you again. <coughs> she, want, she wants to say she's not clear about the needle part. Okay, all right. Dr. Sonia, see, this purple color, okay, think the uh, doctor is holding that thread on the uh, on the left hand side, right? On, with the left hand. So the needle is attached to this side. So when you are going to do that, there will be a needle attached with the suture, right? With the suture material. So you need to keep that in one hand. It can be done with your right hand or the left hand, but you need to keep that hand still. And with your other hand, you have to do everything where the threads will be moving. Okay, you need to keep that in your mind that the needle part shouldn't be moving within the knots. Okay, so if you can see this again, you will understand, I guess. See that with your middle finger. So you're going to go over the purple, the right, under the white, and extend. The white color so is form across. free of any needle. With your middle finger and your ring finger, you're going to pinch the white string and pull it through the loop you created. See? And you can see that we've tied an overhand knot. Dr. Sonia, are you clear now? Yes, sir, if I'm audible, sir. Yes, you're audible. Are you clear now? Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Okay. Pull it tight, first knot's done. The second one starts the same way. And essentially, securing the string with your lower three fingers, you're gonna extend your pointer finger, and with your thumb to help position it, you can see that we form the shape of a claw. I like to call this move the claw. You're gonna take your post, wrap it over your pointer finger in the opposite direction. Now the next move is the exact same as before, but this time with your pointer finger. You're going to go over the purple, under the white, again using your thumb to help position it, and extend. Now we only have one finger, so we can't grab the string. Instead, we're going to rotate it backwards through this loop and pull our free end through. When we pull it tight, we've got our first square knot. See, this is the first throw, okay? So you have to perform two types of hand movements, and it will be one knot. Okay, one square knot. And you have to give at least three square knot for this purpose. So to tie a square knot with a one-handed technique, first you do a karate chop, then you do a claw, you get a square knot. Let's tie a second square knot. And this time around, we're gonna pay attention to which direction we're pulling the strings. So with our post secured, we're gonna karate chop the string. Drape it over, go over under, pinch it, and pull it through. Now, the direction to pull this depends on the orientation of the string. When we do the karate chop, you can see that the free end already is pointing away from us. So, with the karate chop, we pull the free end in the direction it already wants to go, we pull it away from us. Let's tie the second knot. Start with the claw, drape it over, go over under, and rotate it through. Now, with the claw, this free end is already pointing towards us, so we pull the free end towards us. When we do that, you can see again that we've got another square knot. Let's do one more knot. Um, with the one-handed technique, this is a little more difficult than the two-handed, so repetition is key. Just keep practicing this. So the first knot, again, the karate chop. We drape it over, over, under, and pull it through. And to tighten it, we pull the free end away from us. The claw, over, under, rotate it through. We pull the free end towards us. It gives us our third square knot. Okay, everyone clear about this? Yeah. You can do that with both of your hands, okay? Maybe you can hold, in most of the cases, most of the surgeons are used to do this uh, by holding the needle side with the right hand and doing the movement with the left hand, if I'm not wrong, right? In yes. most of the cases, in most of the yes. surgeons. But I am used no, to yes, do like you. this the way you see the video, okay? I'm weird maybe, but I used to do this, like this way. So both